The mathematical concept known as input-output rules is central to our entire study of algebra. This screencast will serve as an introduction to input-output rules. And to get started with input-output rules, we're going to first look at a real-life situation. The Pool Pavers Company specializes in creating paver borders around the perimeter of square in-ground pools. Each paver is one square yard. How many tiles are needed to complete each of the three jobs below? Whether you're a novice or a mathematician, whenever you first encounter applications, it's often a good idea to just start playing with the problem, see if you can get a sense of what's going on. So these, each of these three here are square pools. So this is five yards, five yards, five yards, five yards, six yards, six yards, six yards, six yards, so on and so forth. Now, their tiles are one square yard. So for example, this could be one of their tiles. And because the sides are five yards long, that means there would be five tiles along the side. So the question is, if we wrap the entire border with this, how many tiles would there be? Well, of course you've got five down here. Of course, we gotta fill in that piece there. You've got this corner right here. We've put five in over here. This corner. One, two, three, four, five, and that corner. So I'm just literally playing with this idea. And in this particular case, we can add this up. There's a total of 24 tiles. You should now pause this screencast and do the same thing with a square pool of side length six yards and a square pool with side length seven yards. If you don't pause it here and actually do this for yourself, you're never going to really make meaning of what's going on here. Once you have done this, you'll see that a square pool with side length five yards needs 24 tiles to do the job. A square pool of side length six yards needs 28 tiles to do the job. And a square pool of side length seven yards needs 32 tiles to do the job. There is some sort of relationship between the size of the pool and the number of tiles needed to do the job. This is precisely what we call an input-output rule. Let's look at a specific definition. An input-output rule is a relationship between two quantities where one quantity usually depends on the other quantity. The output quantity specifically depends on the input quantity. So the output depends on the input. So the first question is, We've got pool side length is one of the quantities, and the total number of pavers is the other quantity. Which one is the input and which one is the output? Well, again, the output depends on the input. So technically, the number of pavers you need to use is dependent on the size of the pool. So the size of the pool is the input, and the number of pavers is the output. So the input is the size of the pool, and that's in yards, specifically one side length because it's a square pool. And the output is the number of pavers. So an input-output rule is a relationship between two quantities, one we call the input, one we call the output, where the output depends specifically on whatever the input is, all right? Now, we're going to study input-output rules in depth, but we want to be able to understand them from several different perspectives. The first one is this here. We want to be able to come up with an input-output table. An input-output table is a numerical representation of an input-output rule. So specifically, we're looking at the relationship numerically. So here we have an input-output table. In general, whenever we create our input-output tables, we put the input in the first column and the output in the second column. So our input here is the pool side length in yards, and the output is the total number of pavers. So this here is just a summary of the information we found on the previous screen. For a side length of five yards, the total number of pavers needed for the job is 24. For a side length of six yards, 28 pavers are needed, and for a side length of seven yards, 32 pavers are needed. So an input-output table is a nice way to organize your information that you find when you're exploring the problem. But there's also another really important reason why we look at input-output tables. To do that, 
Let's first answer this question. What if there was a pool of side length eight yards? Again, a square pool with side length eight yards. What is the total number of pavers needed to wrap that pool? Well, we want to try to do this without having to draw a pool with side length eight yards and then filling in the tiles. Can we start to see a pattern here in the table? Many of you might notice that as the side length here is going up by one yard, the corresponding number of pavers is going up by four yards. So you notice a pattern here. So since eight is one more than seven, you may say to yourself, this should be four more than 32. And if you actually went back and drew a pool and drew the tiles around it, you will see there's actually 36 tiles needed. While we have successfully discovered a pattern here, the way we looked at this pattern is, is pretty limiting, and you're going to see why in the next screen. Are 5, 6, 7, and 8 yards the only possible side lengths for square pools? Certainly not. You could have one of length, side length 4, or 12, or 13, or 20. There are many, many different possible size pools. So I want you to suppose for a minute. The pool pavers is hired to surround a large community pool with their pavers. If the square pool has side length 24 yards, how many pavers do they need to do the job? So you can see here is the input output table from the previous screen. But now it's also got this row down here. And these dots just mean there's a gap in here. So what we want to find out is if a pool has side length 24 yards, how many pavers do they need to wrap the pool in the pavers? Well, the way we did this previously was as this went up by one, the corresponding number of pavers went up by four. But notice, this is a pain in the neck to do the same thing here because we need to go from eight to nine to 10 to 11 to da 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 all the way up to 22, 23, and then 24. So there's a lot left out here. So this same approach is not very good. Instead, Let's go back to the way we initially started this by drawing a picture and see if we can come up with a pattern from there. So we've got a pool, and the pool has side length 24 yards. Remember, it's a square pool, so all the side lengths are 24 yards. The tiles themselves are each one square yard. So ultimately, how many tiles can we get on one side? There'd be 24 of them here total because the side length is 24 yards and each tile is one square foot or square yard. So we've got 24 tiles here. And by the same reasoning, you'd have 24 tiles here and 24 tiles on this side and 24 tiles on this side. But then, of course, don't forget, we need these four corner tiles here. So we've got one more tile right here. One more tile right here. Of course, this is not drawn to scale. One more tile right here, and one more tile right here. So the total number of tiles, you've got four 24s, which is 96, and then you've got one, two, three, four more for the corners. 96 and four is a total of 100. Our next step is to see if we can generalize this pattern here with any side length pool. 